You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of, of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be always with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, my friends, and those who are joining us online. We rejoice not only in our Lord's resurrection, the resurrection to eternal life that he has called each one of us. As we enter into this time of prayer, of grieving, let us comfort one another and pray in particular for the repose of the soul of our dearly departed sister in Christ. And so too we are reminded in so many ways that in the waters of baptism, Barb died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him in eternal glory. So too, as Paul reminds us, we are to clothe ourselves with Christ, and we wear this baptismal garment as a sign of our inward Christian dignity. I invite Kathy and Jim to come forward and to place the pall upon the casket. God continues to reveal his face to each one of us, and he does so most perfectly in his holy word. And so I invite Kathy to offer the Bible and to place it upon the casket as a reminder of the many ways in which God spoke to Barb. Barb mirrored that conversation. So too, she sacrificed in love for the sake of many. I asked Jim to place the crucifix on the casket. Call to mind the many ways in which she suffered for those whom she loved. And it seems most especially that her heart was the heart of a mother and a friend. And so we place this rosary on the casket as a reminder of the way in which she sought to mirror Our Lady's maternal love of others. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery your servant, Barb, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you all please to be seated and for Michael to come forward to proclaim our first reading. This is such a perfect reading for Aunt Barb and the times we live in. A reading from the prophet Micah. You have been told, old man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. Only do right and to love goodness and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be afraid? Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my help. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom should I shrink? 
There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I believe I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hope in God and take heart. Hope in the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be afraid? Of whom should I be afraid? I would invite Liz to come forward and proclaim our second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. resurrection and the life says the Lord whoever believes in me will never die alleluia 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 the Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew glory to you O Lord when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. On behalf of Holy Family Catholic Community, our pastor, Father Ryan, and myself, Father John, our deepest condolences to all of you and to those who are joining us virtually at the loss of our, our sister in Christ, Barb. And really, in particular, just having prayed through some of the words that were shared with me, having read the words of her life, and really having just prayed for her in these recent days and prayed through these beautiful readings that you've chosen, um, something really just came through. It was a very clear and present sign that I wish to communicate today. We see our Lord take the crowds. So often our Lord is kind of dismissive of the crowds. At times, because of what Jesus teaches, what he preaches, the crowd becomes something our Lord tries to avoid. 
because they seek him out for the wrong reasons, and so he retreats across the Sea of Galilee. At times, for what he preaches to them, they become violent, and so he passes through their midst. But there are a couple of moments in which our Lord desires to manifest a particular teaching or truth to them. And so we see this, Jesus seeing the crowds. He does three things. He goes up the mountain, he sits down, and he begins to teach. He goes up the mountain, he rests, and he begins to teach. For the people of this time in particular, the mountain and the wilderness and what it evoked in their own hearts was always a place of encounter with God. We hear in the prophet Isaiah and all throughout the Old Testament of the mountain being this locus of encounter with God. And in fact, the feast we celebrate today is the presentation of the Lord, or as it's celebrating in the Eastern Church, is the meeting of the Lord. And really, this is what our whole life is about, is about that moment of encounter, is that meeting, because each one of us remembers these encounters with Barb, remembers these moments, because that's what they become for us, moments, milestones, and markers on the journey of our own lives, that if we think about our relationship to her, each one of us has our own unique relationship of laughs shared, of time enjoyed together. But the danger is, and the grief I think that we feel in our own hearts as we sort of situate ourselves today, is a fear. Is a fear that these meetings, these encounters, and these moments become nothing more than a memory. Nothing more than a memory. What I offer to you today for your own prayer is that to make of Barb a memory would be to do a disservice to her. She not much more than a memory. That encounter is an encounter with a person. But we would just as soon not encounter others. It's much easier to make our way through life compartmentalizing all of our relationships. These are my coworkers, and I have a particular attitude with them. This is my immediate family, and this is how I speak and act and work with them. These are my crazy second cousins. I don't talk to them at all. We compartmentalize because life's too difficult and too complex to do anything other than that. And yet what our Lord is seeking from us is he invites us to sit, as you have, to come up the mountain as we enter into the sanctuary of his temple here in this church, is to hear from his words again with a new heart and new ears and a new mind. Because we've heard these words time and again. I could say it, and I'm sure you remember it. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And each one of you knows, yes, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What our Lord so rarely does is situates himself in the midst of the crowd to teach them something. Be seated is the position of one who has a place of authority. This is how the rabbis would teach to the people and their disciples. They would sit, and they would teach. And so we know something important is going on here. Matthew, this gospel, he's writing to a particularly Jewish crowd. So they understand the significance of our Lord seating himself. And he offers to us a way. And let's listen to how difficult this way is. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they who mourn, who are meek, who hunger for righteousness, who are merciful, pure of heart, who make peace and suffer persecution and insults for the sake of God. We could spend our whole lives pouring into just one of those Beatitudes. Just pouring into that way. Because what our Lord is inviting us into is not something that is much more difficult, that will test us, as if he delights in our being tested underneath this way. Instead, what our Lord recognizes is our desire for a fullness of life. And so he offers to us this way. He offers to us this way precisely because he sees it as a way out of our misery and grief. 
And it's these ways and these aspects of Barb's life that resonated with us. Because we could share stories about how she was creative, crafty, lovely at this game or that game, had these different skills and talents, but if we think about what we loved about her, it was not the details of her life, it was who she was, what she was, and how she was in our lives. Nurturing, making peace, praying for us, suffering for our sake. Is this not what we loved in her? So her life is not some memory or some words which can describe who she is but it is the fullness of who she is. So it's not something that we can simply set to the side, on the shelf, and say, remember Barb, she's so much more than that. Because our Lord understands that in each person, it's a moment of encounter. As he seeks to encounter us, each person too shares in that. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do to me, Christ says. And he gives us an axiom and a way of life that says, When we are out in the world, we cannot see each other simply as figures, but as people, as individuals. And so we make of Barb not a memory, but something dynamic in our lives, as much as we think of those things that she was, and we try to live it ourselves. She was nurturing. I need to be more like that. She made peace. I need to be more like that. She was so thoughtful. She was so merciful. She suffered so much for so many whom she loved. Make these not memories in our lives, but let them be a moment of dynamism. They work in our lives so we become more like her. Because the things we love in Barb are the things we see in Christ. This is the invitation into the Beatitudes. In living this way, we become more like him, and in becoming more like him, we bring the kingdom of heaven to one another. This is the great cross of the Christian faith, that this is not an easy way. And it's against everything the world tells us will make us happy and fulfilled. And yet at the end of our lives, when we're placed there in the casket and our friends and family gather, these are the things alone that they will remember. Everything else just becomes a memory. Everything else is accidental to who we are. The things that remain and live on in us and will live on in our hearts and in our lives from Barb are the beatitudes that she sought to live. And so we pray for her today. We pray for the repose of her soul. We pray for her family in particular who grieves. But we make not of her a memory. We seek instead to continue to live out those beatitudes which she shared in her life. And in doing so, we bring honor to her, we enliven her in our lives, and we go forth to proclaim the kingdom. Standing now, brothers and sisters, we acknowledge Christ risen from the dead and seated at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in him, we join our prayers to his as Liz comes forward to offer our prayers and petitions. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Barb received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our hear our our prayer. That those who bear the cross of pain in mind or body may never feel forsaken by God. And especially let us pray at this time for Barb's son, my cousin Peter, Kathy's brother, who is very ill in the hospital at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our hear our prayer. The family and friends of Barbara see comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. 
for unity among all Christian people so that we may build the kingdom of God in our communities with a shared faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That one day, all of us here may enjoy glorious new life in the company of Barbara and all the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and place them, grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the preparation of the altar. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Barb, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned. That those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, 
Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of, our, of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper is ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, this pa of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Barb, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
Amen, Amen, Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Barb may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This moment I invite you all, please, to be seated for Kathy to come forward to offer her words of remembrance.
Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here to support us and to celebrate the life of a beautiful woman. Family, I love you. You're here with us in spirit. I'm so glad you can participate this way through this technology. On behalf of my brothers, <coughs> Pete and Jim, and my sister Sue, we are very grateful for your love and support at this difficult time. I'd like to share just a few quick stories about mom so you get a little more sense of who she was as a, as a person. I think many of you here today have met her at least and, and enjoyed her, her humor and her generous heart. Uh, mom and dad were set up by friends uh, while mom was in nursing school. They dated for a little while and got married on June 30th of 1951. And um, they moved to Madison, Wisconsin, where they lived for a year or so. My oldest brother, Peter, was born in Madison. Um, soon my dad got a new job in Chicago, and so they headed back to uh, where they were originally from, my mom from Wil Wilmette and my dad from Chicago. And they were able to purchase my um, mom's home that she was raised in. And that's where they raised our family for the next 20 some years. When his job changed, my dad's job changed from Chicago to Boston, um, I was already in college, so I stayed here. Uh, my younger brother Jim just graduated, and my sister Sue was still in high school, and Peter was out uh, going to school at colleges, several of them. And um, it was a new adventure for our family because we've been so close to home all our lives. Um, then eventually, uh, Dad took a retirement and moved to Germantown because they missed the Midwest, and I was nearby, um, which is a challenge to my siblings because they missed Mom and Dad, too. Um, Mom has always been known as a sweet and loving person. Um, she retired from nursing after getting married and was a, a good 50s housewife and spent her time raising family and caring for our home and creating um, warm events with family members. She really was ageless. Many have commented to me that they didn't realize she was 91 years old. This is a story from my brother Jim. He recalls the many times, um, especially in grade school, when she was the transport for their basketball team. And they'd all pack in her um, Chevy Bel Air wagon, excuse me, Chevy Bel Air wagon and would go to many games that way. And my mom loved it. She loved hearing the stories behind her head. And my sister Sue has a similar story when they were out in uh, Massachusetts living in Medfield. Um, my mom was transporting the girls to some of the away basketball games or even in town. <laughs> and my sister loves telling the story of this one trip. They were driving along, the girls were talking, mom's focusing on the road. And all the girls started screaming, laughing, and my mom was, you know, focused on the road, and the girls all started shouting, they're mooning us, they're mooning us. And there was a car full of boys that had dropped their drawers, and mom was focused on the road. <laughs> um, these are some personal words from my sister Sue. Our mom was a remarkable woman. She meant so much to those she knew and loved. She was a wife, a mother, a daughter, a sister, a favorite aunt, a dear friend. Susie said that she learned how to be loving and compassionate from mom. She learned to enjoy black and white movies with mom. They would eat popcorn or peanut butter and crackers. And some of their favorite movies they shared were um, The Quiet Man and The African Queen. And most favorite of all of us was The Sound of Music. The song Edelweiss would always touch her whenever she heard it. Who said she also learned to love peanut butter, mayo, and lettuce. That was a unique thing to our family for sandwiches. When Sue would visit as an adult, um, they would always enjoy getting glazed French donuts from the bakery. She says, thank you, Mom. I love you. One of Barb's granddaughters, Karen, Susan's daughter, um, shares that as hard as she tried, she could not come up with one singular example uh, about mom, a story that she wanted to tell about grandma, due to the amount of love and hum oh. 
incredible amount of humility and love that Grandma embodied. She was the most, Karen says, she was the most wonderful, kind, most loving, most encouraging, and most supportive person in her life. Karen says it's hard to settle on one thing to share. Nothing seems to be a good enough example. Grandma listened well. My oldest brother, Pete, seemed to be the challenging child, always trying to be independent, creative, thinking on his own. And he's in our hearts and prayers today as he's currently dealing with some major health issues in Boston. So please keep him in your prayers. And then a couple quick stories from me. Um, one story my mom loved retelling was when I was not quite two years old and she was eight and a half months pregnant with my brother and I was learning to ride the tricycle and I had taken off up the neighbor's driveway and was on a deadline direction to hit the garage door and here she is eight and a half months pregnant running after me trying to stop me and um, she didn't have any success and that's why I have this lovely bump in my nose to today. Um, something fun from, from Jim is when we were dating and, and the first time he met my parents, um, he wasn't used to a family practice that we had, which was reaching out with a big hug and a kiss on the cheek. And my mom was coming at him like this and he was shaking, going, what do I do? <laughs> but after that, he loved those hugs. He loved as many hugs as he could get from her. Um, my movie story with mom was eating popcorn and watching the movie uh, The End of the Sixth Happiness. It was a movie with Ingrid Bergman and she was a British woman who became a missionary in China during the years before World War II. And it was just one that we enjoyed and, and shared together. A family story was we were in Vermont for my parents' 40th wedding anniversary. My sister had found a resort with some cabins that we could all stay at. And um, we thought we would have fun and um, give them an old-fashioned Wisconsin shivery. <laughs> so they were out. While they were out, we proceeded to short sheet their bed. We put aluminum foil on the ceiling. And when lights were out, we went outside and we were banging pots and pans outside their window. <laughs> we all thought it was terrific. <laughs> I think they enjoyed it, too. Um, one other thing is mom's roots were here in Wisconsin. Um, we have some relatives from that family here today, which makes my heart happy and hers. Um, her great, 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 I don't remember how many greats, <laughs> uh, grandfather, Michael Rodenkirk, had come over uh, from Germany um, on one of the, the ships and gone through um, New York. And their group of people settled in the Kewaskum area. And um, the church that's there, St. Michael's Church, has been named after my great-great-great-grandfather. So, so my roots are here. The grandchildren want me to share this story with you. Um, I think it started with our son, Michael. Um, and they were playing around. And you know they'd laugh and tickle each other. And there's one point that our son had turned around, and she kind of pinched his little buns. And she goes, I've got your sweet meats. And so that became uh, one of her loving uh, signals to all the children. So when the rest of the grandchildren were around, they would be ready for grandma to, to go for their sweetmeats. One, one time my aunt was there, and so she thought, well, she'd get in on this too. And she said to my nephew, Andrew, give me your sweetmeats. And he goes, no, no, those are grandma's sweetmeats. <laughs> Um, my friend Jill had a reflection she wanted to share um, and about how she had experienced mom's bright mind and, and feisty independence and precious nature. Jill taught us the game of Quirkle, and mom's friend Mary, who helped with her hard housework, knew Jill, and we started uh, periodically having lunches after Mary was done and um, playing the game of Quirkle. And, um, Jill's kind of competitive, and she's practiced Quirkle quite a bit. And she wanted to help mom make sure she got enough points. And um, so she was kind of pointing things out or saying, well, what about this? And mom replied to Jill, and this made her laugh. I think I can do this on my own. 
Jill also recalls mom's confidence in her life that was rooted deeply in the belief in belief and faith in God, kind of a deep spiritual mo- knowing. Um, she remarked to Jill one day, she said, you know, I talk to Michael every day. And that was very treasured. Um, after dad died, I learned of mom's fierce, fierce independence. She was going to manage on her own. She was going to do this. And she did. And she had um, a wonderful eight plus years since my dad died. Um, she took care of her finances, and even though it took her some struggles sometimes, she didn't let her checkbook beat her. Uh, she was bound and determined um, that she knew where she was going when the next chapter of her life came. She had planned to move into assisted living when it was necessary and chose St. Francis because of its stepped um, classifications that it has, that if you came in in independent living, you could move to assisted, and if you um, needed more help, then you could move into um, the nursing home part. Fortunately, she needed to move into assisted living, was there for uh, 13 months. She moved in in December last year, and um, that was good because she was safe during COVID, and they took good care of her. The only difficulty was that we couldn't see her. And um, I got to see her a few times after June to take her to doctor appointments. And then we'd sneak out for a sandwich and, or maybe go down to Kelly's and have an ice cream and then I would take her back to St. Francis. One other thing, and, and I, you may have heard it um, listening to the video, mom and dad had a song that was theirs uh, when they were dating and didn't talk about it a lot, but mom always said, you know, I really like that song. That was your dad and my song. And it was called Always. It was sung in that era by Frank Sinatra. And I'll just share some of the lyrics with you. And this is kind of a legacy to their life and marriage. I'll be loving you always. With a love that's true always. When you things you've planned need a helping hand, I will understand always. Days may not be fair always. That's when then I'll be there always. Not for just an hour, not for just a day, not for just a year, but always. Always. Always, all the time. So thanks for sharing a little bit in my mom's story, and thank you for being here. Family, I love you. Mom, I love you. Parting from here, we'll have our final commendation and then procession to the cemetery at St. Charles, where we'll lay to rest the soul and the body of our departed sister in Christ. So we hear in so many ways the beautiful ways which Barb touched the lives of so many, which Kathy shared with us. Just in particular, the fidelity and the perseverance in her life, always, always showing that love. Much is asked of us as Christians, and yet when we give in to that demand to always give, to always love, People receive its fruits uh, ten and a hundred times. And so I invite you to stand. I invite you into a moment of prayer. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. I know that my Redeemer lives On the last day I shall rise again And in my flesh 
I shall see God on the last day. I shall rise again. I shall see my Savior's face, and my own eyes shall behold my God. On the last day, I shall rise again. I know that my Redeemer lives. On the last day, I shall rise again, and in my flesh I shall see God. On the last day, I shall rise again. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Barb, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead, but in your sight may she live forever. Forgive whatever sins she's committed through human weakness, and in your goodness grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest. shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life. Say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. The snare of the fowler will never capture you and famine will bring you no fear. Under his wings your refuge his faithfulness your shield and he will raise you up on eagle's wings bear you on the breath of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand and hold you hold you in the palm of his hand